A.R. Rogers. Woo! I want the spicy part. Alright. Good take. Alright. I hope whoever gets the Dr. Whoopie Pie candle. I'm pretty, I'm serious, I think you could sell it. Try to take it back to Target. <laughs> Monica. Yay. Oh, yeah! I just the candle. There you go. <laughs> All right. Our last reader tonight is Tim Early. In addition to publishing three collections of poems, including most recently poems descriptive of rural life and scenery from Horseless Press, Tim also holds the claim to fame of having pairs of his trousers in the world's biggest trouser mosaic, which is a real thing. Okay. Look it up, it's amazing. To honor him for his many accomplishments, such as graduating from the MFA program at the University of Alabama and getting two writing fellowships from the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown, the organizers of the trouser mosaic included not one, but three of Tim's trousers among the more than 23,000 that make up the mosaic in China. Now it's our turn to honor a wonderful poet, Tim Early. Okay, I want to thank Tyler for bringing me out here and for you guys for, for coming out and listening and, uh, to the other readers who were awesome. I'm going to be reading from a book called Poems Descriptive of Rural Life and Scenery. I stole the title from John Clare's 1820 debut, Poems, comma, Descriptive of Rural Life and Scenery. So I thought, just take out the comma, it'll be fine. It's very dead. Uh, the poems, um, they don't have titles because those are difficult. They don't have line breaks, also difficult. Um, and they're in the voice of uh, a recalcitrant Appalachian person. Each one of the poems sort of begins in 1987 in Sandy Mush, North Carolina, and ends in Paris, France in the end. Um, spring placed its finger on my spine. I am not some kind of zombie with a surfboard and ham. I am not some kind of pigeon cooing itself to death. The engine of my flatbed truck cuggles on the hill. The neighborhood wyvern sits a lilt on the berm of its own brain. I am ready to have some babies. I am ready to be a bellicose producer and have some babies and toss them into the air for years until the Lord strikes them with the gift of speech and their tails turn the mountains insides out into the meat I eat for breakfast. Until then, I will watch my squash grow and pine for the cleft of some long lost beauty's historical chin. The daily path is riddled with deceits, dresses, yellow hymns. We were merry once, we hung curtains. The Lord brought us together in a shallow pool. The water beaded on her fur. I loved and despised both her vicious and enduring parts. She could not get on with my mother and left for the insolvent side of Jacksonville, Florida. The blue mouth killed my mother, her head wrapped, her incessant dusting. The hymnal contained eternal springs and she sang over it, her thick ankles and periwinkle eyes. The sparred mystic in the clouds of March reached inside us. Walking to the church was terrifying. Walking into the church felt like walking into your own mouth. Inside the church, Jesus was hairy with milk laments, and there was a copperhead swimming in the baptismal. The blue mouth killed her. Do not put your mouth on the spigot, dear Lord. Do not insert into your mouth a hickory twig, sweet Peter James. I suspect my children will not exist, or else become legendary in their silences. Mute puddocks scrim from the sour mash, and yet the mountain rain, all kinds of spectacular dying, biblical black leather, going to town, hair that won't stop growing, a mosquito stealthing blood, the asylum inmates buried vertically. I shall play my toothpick. I shall eat yonder cabin. I shall ride yonder donkey. I shall hoe yonder cake. I shall be wrought from my own particular orality. I shall wear the yellow dress in private. I shall smoke my mother. I am not some kind of zombie with a surfboard and ham. I piss upon your digital age and your perfumes rent from dog eggs. I am wrenched into this mountain. It is arish out. I ruin my crotch with your killing gun. Scoop out my scrotum like a pumpkin's entrails. Remove my potato eye and shove into its gulch the cachet bearing fury of your Quaker cock. Break my spine, silver rain. Abate of ruined teeth and quick feckled lies. 
She remains in Jacksonville still, and in my dreams, tiny dobros hang from her firm and too large ears. My warp singing shovel hangs in the barn. I've never heard a more vatic rooster that dazzle, old twilight, some bright morning, a song more dead. The original chord, sticky with death. We reveined it with a supplemental tube. This reveining gave Rusty an erection. This wasn't new. He had a bad time just trying to come out and say what he wanted. So he usually got erections instead. Factory work of this type is difficult. You draw up your own schematics, but are rarely allowed to use them. Every morning in the Middle Ages, they attempted to kill some of the slower peasants with vast and grim mechanical entrapments. They made many mistakes in correctly identifying the most defunct brain morals. A lot of us are still here. A lot of us are simple as bread. Honeysuckle on fire, deer screaming from the ledges of hell. I am riding you through reams of hermaphrodite. The merging of nacreous and asterigo invokes the fatal law. A cow accidentally licked my ass in the history of consciousness. There is another just below the surface, respiring haltingly. His name is Steve. His hands are full of gold-capped teeth. His dead brain is six red horses. Oh, look, a bottle cap. Oh, look, the trashes and the urban decays. Oh, look at the slate gray life of my life, life. The pools were advertised as bottomless. I had to practice to become an interrupter. Fly flare and old timey without great durability. The celestial patron is still just like that. It's still such things happen. It's still, it is quiet inside this cell. Out of the various forms of redundancy, an organ bomb is planted inside the anchor right. But first let me describe my native element. How we sacrificed everyone except Marlene because she was a volume smoker and said once after experiencing a monastic vision, I'm in solitude with the dog. And these were things that frightened us. Everyone knew the pageant was in the dog's brain. Everyone knew Mr. Meemer's sexual practices were popish with squid. With a flashlight, I am looking for a multifractal termite in the dark. This is my hopelessness. I whistle the tune of the roving gambler and the stolen grandfather clock. Instead, I find your beautiful face. The Lord does not have a sinus cavity, but by God, if he did, I had too much tin fed silver whiskey last night. Imperial masculine doom, I beseech ye. This did not facilitate a staff lick. Once we seek a rutting vice, a moaning vice surely follows. He combed a vulgar knot in her speech where the foul of maintaining the rookery retains its separateness. Sun somber bruise, flare pick exhumed. I like this material clock. I like to open its heart. I like to wind its heart. I like to eat its mercy time. I like to flock into the clock. I like to throw its pendulum errant and fly in the midnight and cock some gentleman's speech, a fine lip, air of whisper. It did not properly separate the grove of my manhood from the simple of my child brood. I tick in its throat. It was my first daddy. It was my first daddy forebloomed. It tick like a singing. It suck like a tick. It worries me. It worries me later on. I'm just going to read two more. A very high number of people call me Pat for no discernible reason. <laughs> the blue sky stretches out, and every horse sun is a giggling minion, though some further rhombus of peace may be offered to us. The beauty of the ineluctable strains. Dish rag, wash rag, rag picker, rag face eat up with worms, proper his coon pipe like a sad wire, and the sin blooming in his brain. Sin erupted straight from his ear. Their initial cast off barbed wire and chicken wire and sag wire. That sort of requisite particulate which provides a stanchioning for such erstwhile fantasies. The fuckers and their spirit dreams, genes, and particular methods of extruding a finch from its proper social position and then the hell rears out from its hole, and everybody commits as a form of inarticulable violence against self and others, the dogs rolled up and watching. A functioning liver resides somewhere in the valley, in the distance, 
Looky here, my nonce, was the last thing he said before he died. Hey, y'all, watch this, was the last thing he said before he died. I thought it were coming from the other direction, was the last thing he said before he died. I laid down to sleep in whatever goodly bower I happened to find. That's not a cloud line that may be profitably followed. It takes a worried man to dig that many post holes in the green darkening of an April sky. I have danced myself chopless and shankless was the last thing he said before she died. All those flowers gathered from the mole encrusted dark and feathery hillside did not seem silly to us any longer. How did your asshole smell when it passed your nose? How did your savior return to you through the moaning nomenclature? How did the horsemen and obscene pursuing mob gain the apex and mingle their pablums and die on the crystalline thrust, just like the good steaded beast they have always become and always been, admirers or not of the traction beyond? Um, my neighbor growing up, uh, he was sort of the, the most successful seller of illegal prescription drugs in Rutherford County. And so there was a lot of action at the trailer next door. Uh, his name was Crazy Eddie, but in the book he shows up as Filch, right? So there's some Filch in this poem. My cousin, a tree frog. My Earl Scruggs, a tree frog. I see inside the translucent curl of amphibian belly. It is June, it is sinkhole, it is patched dungarees, it is kerosene fire, it is hay bale. Filch's life in serious nomenclature attributed. He killed a man with a railroad spike once. He burned down a house around his lover once and she sits in the chair in the ash and smoke. She almost a diaphanal phoenix, cigarillos in her boot, and she pops his shin with a hammer, was all in the contents of time. He sells them scripts and makes $500 and more. He replaces the bad engine. His mother, she chases him with a butcher knife. His mother, he chases her with a baseball bat, the phone yellow and on the wall and always ringing. Blue lights bob in the night like the flicker in the night, like the alien impresario in the night, like it is venal album scathed on the grass. It is the grass itself scathed by the Lordy Burn. The Lordy Burn is flexing virus into our ears and out go the mongrel itch from our brains, but not our crotches. Oh, Thorny, never. He ran over himself. That is possible. He identified the bad element. It is a spectral face of the river laird. It is the sour mouthed others. It is sawdust pile and hornet and jack startle and mica as notary scratch and event. It is all that which is foolishness and all that which is not foolishness. In the boss cage, the head of the treasure daddy is screaming like advancing pigs or a storm cord. It's ransable insides, a last metery of horizon and verses. The coral raptured, snap tuned a gorse and grop simple and always the wind, the wind, it is natched and not. It is one more nail in the intestinal bone, the gamete trigger, the poisons arise, the forelording prig and a simic grief. It is one more body body in the ground. Thank you.